So today I had a friend hit me up and he wants me to help him tune his uh, Miata cart. I think that's what you call them, like an exo caged Miata. No body on it. So let's go over there and check this thing out. It's pretty rad. It's a built 1.6, just like mine. Uh, he does drag racing and I think he said he ran up to 30 pounds of boost, but he just did a fresh rebuild. So I'm gonna help him completely redo his, his uh, tune. And uh, yeah, let's go check it out. I think it's a pretty cool rig. I think his goal is to get into the 10s, but he's ran a low 11 second pass in his uh, Miata cart. Super cool rig, super nice guy. Being out on the roads, it's I mean, it's like 40 degrees here right now. So let's go have some fun, help this guy tune his car and see how it turns out. All right, just popped over to uh, James's place. Let's go check out his Miata cart and get this thing tuned for him. So, I know the camera died when we were out there doing some tuning and stuff. Uh, in the end, it was a super success. We turned up the boost to, I think I saw 21 pounds on the gauge. And, I mean, 21 pounds, that thing's a rocket ship. I'm curious, I told him at 25 pounds of boost, my car made 400 horsepower to the tire. So when he goes to the dyno, I said, shoot for 25 and let me know what the uh, China Turbo does at 25 pounds of boost to the tire. That was a lot of fun. He should be happy with that setup. So if you were paying attention, you noticed that I did say that my car made 400 horsepower at the tire. And there are some higher horsepower Miatas out there, I'm sure, but 400 is still a ton of power to be putting through such a small, light chassis. Just to give a little bit of a backstory on, because this all happened in the past year. So I've got a uh, video here of right before I tore down and started to do the engine swap of me on the dyno. I ran the stock internal engine with a simple Flying Miata piece together turbo kit. I didn't realize until I was on the dyno, but I was maxing out the 2560R Garrett turbo that was on there, around 17 pounds of boost. So you can see that the wastegate doesn't open the entire run. Um, it's commanding as much flow through that turbo as it possibly can. And that's 17 pounds and I made 260 horsepower at the rear tire on 91 pump gas in the bone stock unopened 1.6 Miata engine. And I, for the most part, I ran that for three years. Then I decided, you know, I wanted to get serious. We were getting a track that was opening up here. I had a friend that crashed his Miata and he had done a build on his. So I purchased his motor. We knew it was kind of hurt because we can look down the spark plug hole and see some pine needles and dirt and mud in the cylinder tops. I was hoping I can clean it and piece something together. He still had um, ARP head and main studs and the rods. Um, it's just a couple things that I could use, including the stage two boundary pump that was in his car, the oil pump. So I got that for a decent deal and I tore it all down. Um, I was hoping that I could use the pistons, but as you can see, there's a ton of pitting around the top of the pistons, even going down into where the ring glands are on the side. And the bore of the cylinder was f fairly scratched up. So I ended up sourcing another block. So I, at this point I had three engines, uh, the one in my car, the one I had tore down, and then I sourced another one for a hundred bucks that I got. That one I tore down so I can use the block out of it and then kind of just Frankenstein pieced these two together to create what's in my car now. It is a 1.6, um, slightly bored over for the Flying Miata turbo pistons. It's also running some one millimeter oversized Supertech valves and Supertech dual valve springs 
to keep the valve train in check. Last year, I would say right around this time, my engine was at the machine shop. I had them board over, cut the valve, the seats for those valves. I had them also internally balance the whole um, rotating, rotating assembly for me. While the engine was at the machine shop, I also took the time, not so much port, but kind of a port and polish of the intake and exhaust runners of the cylinder head. I also uh, port match the intake runners of the intake manifold to the cylinder head. As far as I know, the 1.6s flow the least amount um, out of all of the NA and NB engines. So I wanted to give it all the help it could, it could use, put in the work because it is a uh, time consuming thing to port and polish all of those runners. Uh, I also did a polish of the uh, combustion chamber dome uh, just to get rid of the rough edges and a smoother combustion dome probably lead to less possibility of a hot spot in there and I just this is the first engine I've really hand built for myself in in a car so I just wanted to make it as good as I could so I just put the time in to do so finally I get the parts back and I do a assembly on the uh, whole engine top to bottom just a quick rundown like I said KA injection rods forged rods I have the Flying Miata turbo pistons. Those come with the Wiseco uh, piston, XX piston rings. It's also running some one millimeter oversized Supertech valves and Supertech dual valve springs. And I used ACL race bearings. And then I had a stage two boundary pump and then ARP head studs as well as ARP main cap studs. I put that together, put it in the car, and then you have that dreaded moment, you know, where you're ready to turn the key, hoping that all of the things that you did when you were building this engine were correct. And uh, as it so turns out, yeah, it was totally correct. I've been pushing this engine quite hard, especially this last season doing drifting. You know, drifting is a, a it puts a lot of stress on an engine, especially a 1.6. I put 400 horsepower to the dyno on a dyno jet at the wheels. Um, I really only did that for three runs and that was at 25 pounds of boost on a Garrett G25 550 with a Kraken cast exhaust manifold feeding it, a three inch exhaust all the way back and then supporting mods. I'll say supporting mods because you can go several different ways on what injectors, fuel pump, intercooler, um, but and then cooling as well. Cooling is a big one especially for drifting. You can go uh, many different ways on many different brands, but I do have all of these supporting mods needed to keep things in check for that engine. But yeah, I just wanted to touch you guys up with the engine essentially, since I was going out and tuning my buddy's Miata cart and give you a little backstory on where my car is as far as power and the engine I'm running. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you can see uh, just a, some drifting action on my first video that I posted. And then now we're doing two Miata cages uh, from Cage Kits. And I think that me and Kevin may be the first and second, or maybe the second and third people to uh, ever install these cages in a Miata. I gotta say, they are top notch. So we are gonna do our hardest here in the next couple of weeks to finish those up and have part two of the Cage Kits episodes done. Um, I had to split it up because, uh, you know, we're working full-time jobs Monday through Friday. We only get the weekends, and it's just, it's taken a few, few more weeks than we expected. So if you haven't, check those out. If you liked what you watch and you're interested in seeing more, please do subscribe, hit the like button. It will really help grow our channel because we want to do this for a long time. If you have any questions, I will do my best and respond to any comments you guys have down in the uh, comments below. Well, there it is. That's a real rough, brief explanation of the engine and the situation in my car right now. Like I said, I will do a full episode on the current status if that's something that you guys are interested in. It's been five years, a lot of man hours, um, and you know, just a lot of fun. So take care, and we will see you next time.